Hi, you're watching Power Dilemmas here with Sarah Bukhari. I hope everyone is doing very well. So, folks, election 2015 is over. We just welcomed our new Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, today, as it's uh, November the 4th today, while bidding farewell to uh, Stephen Harper, our, our outgoing Prime Minister. And uh, we have seen that it was uh, the uh, NDP who lost the major vote by about a million. Uh, Conservatives' uh, voter base was the same. Uh, they, there was no change in their voter base. And it was the Liberals who gained around 4 million voters. And most of their votes came Came from uh, new voters and at this time it is extremely important to see why do people vote why do voters vote for a certain party and it is uh, extremely important to dissect or post uh, do a little post mortem of the election so today we are very lucky to have with us uh, mr. Jerry Nichols uh, Jerry is a communication consultant and formerly vice president of uh, the organization called National Citizens Coalition welcome to uh, my show power dilemmas here at TV Jerry how are you I'm awesome thanks for having me on the show Sarah wonderful so let's start our talk by uh, talking about this huge event today mm -hmm. in Canadian history November 4th the swearing-in of Justin Trudeau who is now the Prime Minister and uh, what is Justin Trudeau bringing to Canadian politics well I think he, he he represents change and I think that was his big message during the election look I'm different than Stephen Harper I'm a different person than Stephen Harper I have a different style than Stephen Harper and, and that resonated with the voters. I think, you know, the G Harper government, um, you know, I think people were fatigued with it. All governments have a uh, limited shelf life. And, and, and once people decide they want change, it's kind of hard to, to change them from that attitude. It's, it's really difficult. And so uh, I think the conservatives tried to counter that by saying, oh, well, yeah, change. I know you want change, but the other guys are too scary or they're too incompetent. Don't vote for them. Uh, but I think people looked at Trudeau. And they, he has a famous last name, he's very telegenic, he, he's very popular, he's very likable. And they said, you know what, we'll take a chance on that guy. Uh, we'll take a chance that uh, he, he's the kind of leader we need uh, in the next few years. And I think he looked at his, at his swearing-in ceremony that he kind of got that message of change out again, at least symbolically. It was a lot less formal a swearing-in ceremony than normal, it was a little more folksy than normal. So even today, even as he's getting into power, he's basically saying, yeah, there's a new sheriff in town, I do things differently, I have a different style. Mm -hmm. So when you say that people were looking for a change, what kind of change voters were looking for? Because it has been uh, suggested by polls and newspapers and a lot of research that, yes, there was a dire need of change. So what kind of change uh, people are looking for? Well, I think um, there's two kinds of change. Uh, stylistically and, and in some policy. Uh, stylistically, I think, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, Justin Trudeau was, was the anti-Harper. It's hard to think of somebody who is more different than, than, than Stephen Harper than Justin Trudeau. They have sort of a different personality, they have a different persona, they have a different style, they have a different emphasis. Um, you know, it's like, you know, going from, from polka music to hip-hop, right? It's, it's completely different. And I think that's what a lot of people liked about Justin Trudeau, is that he, he's more likable. Stephen Harper, Harper was kind of dour, he was kind of straight-laced, a little boring. And here we have a guy who's a little more exciting, he's a little more fun. So I think that was a big part of it. Um, and I, you know, in terms of his, his policy, um, I think a lot of people, um, you know, wanted a different approach to, to the economy. They wanted a different approach to foreign policy. They just wanted a different approach. Uh, to, to how government was run. And I think, and I think that's something that, that we're going to see moving forward uh, with Justin Trudeau, different stylistic in terms of, of, of his leadership and different emphasis in some of the policies. Okay, so let's get back to how the, how the people voted. Let's uh, d look into the nitty-gritty of the voter thinking and voter psychology. Like liberals really pushed uh, themselves into a majority, mm -hmm. but uh, research has shown that their vote was split in a way that uh, either liberal voters were voting against a party or for a party. How far is it true that their uh, vote was uh, divided or a split strategy? Well, I haven't seen the numbers crunched. But that wouldn't surprise me. That's pretty typical for voters. Um, it's not just they like somebody. Sometimes it's they don't like somebody. Um, and, and that will propel them to vote. And again, that's one of the dilemmas of being an incumbent government. When you're an incumbent government, you're always making decisions. And every time you make a decision, you're going to make somebody mad. Or you're, there's a potential of making somebody angry at you. As someone once said, in politics, friends come and go. 
but enemies only accumulate. And so after a while, you get a lot of people say, you know what, I don't like them, I, I want to get rid of them, I don't care who I want, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to somebody else. And there are people who, who, who genuinely have a different emphasis on politics, you know, people who, who, who would never vote for the Conservative Party because they think the Conservative Party is too right-wing or it doesn't represent their values, it doesn't represent their, their viewpoints. So they would be attracted to a guy like, like Justin Trudeau who is saying, look, I'm going to be doing things differently. And a lot of people who are lifelong liberals are going to vote for the Liberals no matter what. That's, mm -hmm. that's sort of the way the political game is played. Mm -hmm. um, according to some research, one-third of the BC Liberals, and this is where Liberals gained unexpectedly, they voted strategically. What is your take on it? I'm, I'm not a big believer that strategic voting happens all that often. I mean, And what is strategic voting? Well, strategic voting is, you know, I, 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 I don't like the Conservatives and, and I don't like the, uh, the Liberals, but I usually vote NDP, but because I want the Conservatives to lose, I'm going to vote for the Liberals. I'm not going to vote for my party. I'm going to vote for another party just to stop, just to stop uh, the Stephen Harper Tories. Uh, some people might do that, um, but I don't think it's all that widespread. I mean, let's face it, Sarah, it's hard enough to get people to vote at all, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard enough to get them even to go to vote for the party they like, but to say, okay, we want you to go out and vote, but not for the party you like, but for another party. It's, 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 it's asking a lot of people. It's asking them to make a lot of mental effort before they vote. Most people don't. Most people don't go to those those lengths. They go to vote for who they like, and in this case, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people like Justin Trudeau. Mm -hmm. Let's move towards the conservative voters now. Is it true that the conservatives were basically appealing to their base? Well, all political parties appeal to their base. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's how you win an election. You you hold on to your base and then you build on that. You hope to get a few votes from different, you know, little coalitions, little different demographic uh, groups and to cobble together enough to win a majority government. So all parties do that. So yes, Stephen Harper was, uh, was uh, appealing to his base in a lot of things he did, um, which he did in 2011 very successfully, and he, and he did successfully in this last election. If, there, if there's a bright spot for the Conservative Party in 2015, and there's not a, lot, not a lot of bright spots for them, but if there is one, it's that they did keep, keep their base pretty much. Their base is still pretty much intact. The problem was they couldn't build on it. Or a lot of the people who may have been part of that base in, in 2011, they abandoned the Conservatives and went somewhere else. So that's going to be the challenge heading forward for the Conservatives. A, how do we keep our base united? Mm -hmm. And B, how do we build on it? How do we get new supporters? How do we put together a new coalition? So why couldn't Conservatives add on to their base? What was the challenge that's in a, 2015? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough question to answer. and it, it, It's going to take a lot of analysis, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of studies coming mm -hmm. out to see what happened. My own sense, you know, and this is just my theory, uh, so take it for what it's worth, is I don't think the Conservatives were aggressive enough in, in, in their campaigning. Uh, I thought they were going to attack Justin Trudeau a little more than they did. It seemed to me they were a little defensive. Um, whenever something happened, whether it was the Duffy trial or the Syrian refugee crisis or his little comment about old stock Canadians, uh, Stephen Harper seemed to be rationalizing, explaining and justifying. Uh, and, and, and you know, being playing defense, and, and there's a, there's a saying in politics that when you're denying, you're dying. You know, you got to stay on the attack. Mm -hmm. You got to keep the initiative. You got to try to keep the other guy off balance. Um, even even their slogan, "Protect the economy," seemed pretty defensive to me. So that's one of the things that surprised me about the conservative campaign. A little passive, a little unlike Stephen Harper in the past, who's you know been more of a bulldog in politics. So I I, I think they didn't do enough to degrade the Trudeau brand during the election. And mm -hmm. that, that might have cost them. Mm -hmm. So you uh, are mentioning that it was a defensive and divisive policy. You think Nick Havishu came out as um, last nail in the coffin or refugee was last in the, uh, nail in the coffin? Well, I, I think What's what, your take on it? I think what really punched him in the gut mm -hmm. was the initial story of the Syrian refugee crisis mm -hmm. when, the, when the horrible, horrible images of the child was washed up on shore. And sort of the immediate reaction from a lot of people in the media was, well, it's Stephen Harper's fault. You know, he, they're, they're basically saying he killed this, this child. That, that seemed to be the implication of a lot of the me early media coverage. And that's really a hard thing to recover from uh, because that played up to the narrative that Stephen Harper is sort of a cold-hearted, you know, soulless uh, monster. And that, that built in that. And it also played to Justin Trudeau's strength where, you know, he's a care bear. You know, he's very compassionate and mm. that's his bit. So that kind of helped 
you know, give him some steam. So I think that was really a blow to the Conservative Party mm -hmm. when that happened. And again, they were, they were kind of clumsy in handling that when that first came out with the media. So I think that was one thing. The niqab issue, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people say, uh, well, this is something when the, when, the, when, when the Conservatives did this, they started losing. Uh, my sense is they were losing, which is why they adopted the niqab issue. Mm -hmm. um, because they saw it as an issue that, you know, people in politics say cut well for them. That is, it's an issue which, you, you, which united their base, but divided their opponents, and specifically the NDP. Because this is an issue that really hurt the NDP in Quebec. And I think the Conservatives said, you know what, we'll play this to the hilt, because it's hurting, uh, it's hurting uh, Mulcair in Quebec, and we'll, we'll win seats in Quebec, which will make up for some of our losses elsewhere. Uh, losses in Ontario or losses in BC. Now, as it turned out, that it, they did gain in Quebec, maybe because of the NICAB issue, but it wasn't enough to offset the, the losses everywhere else. Uh, what kind of damage has it done to the Conservative Party long term? I don't know. We'll have to see. But it's certainly one of those things that got them a lot of bad press. And so they're going to have to they're going to have to learn how to you know to turn that page and, and go forward. Mm -hmm. You were mentioning that um, Justin Trudeau got the sympathy vote, particularly focusing on the refugee crisis which just erupted. Do you think that uh, the hero-like image of Justin Trudeau played in his uh, success? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he ran as a celebrity, mm -hmm. basically. He ran as a, as a pop star. And, uh, you know, he has all the attributes to, to run that kind of campaign. You know, he's, he's got a famous last name that everybody knows and respects, a famous, famous father, Pierre. Uh, he's, he's telegenic, he's good looking, uh, he's got a little bit of charisma, and the media, the media adored him. They always gave him a lot of good press. And so all those things make him, make him into a different kind of politician, mm -hmm. a celebrity politician. And they're hard to beat. You know, it's one thing to beat another politician. It's hard to beat a rock star. Um, and I think that's why the Conservatives spent two years trying to degrade his brand with various attack ads when he first came out. You know, he's in over his head, he's not ready, and all this kind of stuff. It took him two years. And they, they, they did manage to break down his brand. And he was like, you know, people forget he was in third place when this election started. And the fact that he was sort of able to rekindle that sense of tr Trudeau mania is really a testament to the Liberal campaign. I think they, they did a good job there. And also a testament to the fact, and this is not really the Conservatives' fault, it's that the NDP didn't take Trudeau out when they had the chance. Because the, the Tories had kind of knocked him down, and I think they were expecting the NDP to finish him off. But they couldn't do it. They didn't do it. And so as a result, Trudeau was able to bounce back up, and you know the rest is history. So do you agree his uh, good hair got him the vote? <laughs> I, th I think it helped him. I think, and just like I think Thomas Mulcair's beard lost him votes. Mm -hmm. um, so much of politics is visual. So mm -hmm. much of politics is emotional. A lot of people don't put a lot of thought into their vote. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like what strikes them emotionally. And, you know, and, and Justin Trudeau is a very likable guy. There's no question he's very likable. And so a lot of people, you know, find that appealing. They like that. And so at the end of the day, they said, yeah, he hasn't got experience. Yeah, he might not be quite ready for the job. We like him. You know, this, in, this has happened before in politics. Ronald Reagan won election after election because he was likable. And it didn't matter what people said about him. Oh, he's too right wing. He's a warmonger. It didn't matter. People liked him. And so that, that, that sort of characteristic of likability is very important for a politician. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 45% of the conservative voters, they voted on job and economy, and then uh, again, 20% um, of them voted on terrorism. Yeah. So let's connect the voters on terrorism and job and economy. What's your take on it? Well, those are always two really important issues for people. Um, economy is always number one, um, you know, because people care about you know, they want to they want to have to keep their job. They want to be able to pay their mortgage. They want to be able to pay their groceries. That's really the number one thing for voters. That's what they care about most. And I think the conservatives were kind of hoping, well, this will help us win because, you know, justly or not, people always consider conservatives to be better economic managers. And so that was kind of the conservative strategy saying, look, you may not like me. You may be tired of me, but I'm the guy who can run the economy. I can keep things going smoothly. Thomas Mulcair is a communist, you can't trust him. And Justin Trudeau, well, he's a punk kid. I wouldn't trust him to run a lemonade stand, let alone the national economy. So that, that was why the conservatives tried to focus on the economy and everything had to be about the economy for them. Um, at the end of the day, I think, you know, Justin Trudeau was able to, uh, you know, assuage people's feelings about that and say, oh, no, 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 I, I can handle the economy. I know what I'm doing. I have a plan, blah, 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 blah. So that really wasn't the, the killing issue. I think the conservatives 
hoped it would be. National security as well. Um, this is also something that's very important. People want to be protected. They want to be protected from bad guys who are out there. This is something Stephen Harper played very well. He was always the guy saying, you know, I'm the guy who's fighting terrorists. I'm going to, you know, fight them here. I'm going to fight them there. I, I'm going to protect you. That, that's something that resonates with people. But I think that the fear of terrorism had ebbed or subsided mm -hmm. in the last few months. And so that kind of undermined that appeal uh, for Stephen Harper. If there had been some kind of a terrorist attack, mm -hmm. say a week or so before the election, that might have changed the election. That's the kind of crisis that might have galvanized people saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I remember about terrorists. Uh, we, we better put Stephen Harper back in because he's better at protecting us. But I think people had kind of pushed that aside and they're willing to, you know, say, Justin Trudeau, okay, let's see what you can do. Mm -hmm. Let's bring in Bill C-51 and C-24 and let's connect it to how Justin Trudeau, our now Prime Minister, is going to uh, look at it. What's your take on that? Well, of course, uh, Bill C-51 is one of those issues which is kind of dogging mm -hmm. Trudeau uh, ever since it was introduced. Because most people, I think, in his base opposed it. Certainly a lot of progressive voters in Canada opposed it. The very same progressive voters he was trying to woo, yet he supported Bill C-51. Although he said, oh, if I'm ever elected, I'll change it. He still supported it. And I think the reason he supported it was because he was afraid if he didn't, you know, Harper and the Tories would, would, would cram him in their media attack ad machine and say, oh, he's soft on terrorism, we can't trust this guy. So mm -hmm. he, he went along with it, I think, for political reasons. I don't think he was ever fully you know, on board with it. We'll see what he does now. We'll see what he does now. Um, he says he's going to change it, he's going to modify it. You know, we'll see. Um, C-24, I think that was, uh, for the Tories, that was a good political issue because I think if you went to most people and you said, do you think terrorists uh, should be stripped of their citizenship? I think 90% of people say, yeah. Absolutely. So that's one of those sort of emotional issues that work well mm -hmm. for Stephen Harper. Um, it'll be interesting to see what Justin Trudeau does with this, because he, of course, was against it, but it's probably pretty popular with a lot of Canadians. So, yeah, this, we'll see how he plays yeah. that one. Because Justin Trudeau has said very famous saying, a Canadian is a Canadian right. is a Canadian. Yeah, and, and there's, a, there's a group of Canadians that would support that view, but I think mm -hmm. most people would say, well, if you're a terrorist, you're not, you don't mm -hmm. love this country, you're, you're against this country, we don't want you here. Um, I suspect at the end of the day he will get rid of it, if only because he has to keep his credibility. Mm -hmm. um, but it might be something that might be unpopular with, with a lot of voters out there. We'll see. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about NDP. Why did they lose? Yeah, I, I think as you said, Sarah, the, the, their loss was probably more devastating than even the Conservative because mm -hmm. I think they had high expectations. Mm -hmm. And here's a party that had a lot of momentum, you know, going into the election. Uh, they were leading or appeared to be leading in, in several opinion polls yeah. at the beginning of the election. They had momentum from the Quebec uh, election, uh, from the federal election of 2011, when they did much better in Quebec than anybody thought they would. They were the official opposition. The NDP in Alberta won a surprise election in Alberta. So they had a lot of things going for them. They had the wind behind, uh, behind their sails. Mm -hmm. um, why didn't it work? Well, I, I have a couple theories uh, for that. I think people, um, A, um, didn't really like NDP policies, or a little bit worried about NDP policies, because they never had an NDP government federally. And that kind of that kind of spooks people. You know, what are they going to do? And I think, secondly, and, and perhaps more importantly, I just don't think they like Mulcair. Um, the, the more they looked at him, the more they saw him, the less they liked him. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's so much like Harper. Mm. You know, he's kind of a dour, straight-laced, um, boring guy. And that's kind of like Stephen Harper. So if you want change, you want something different, well, Kerry doesn't really deliver in a lot of ways. And there you have, you know, fun guy Justin Trudeau. He does look uh, uh, like a different guy, like change. And so I think when people started comparing the two, they started saying, yeah, we like Trudeau better. And they started going to him. And as I said, I don't think the beard helped. Mm -hmm. I don't think the beard helped him. It kind of, you know, made him look like somebody maybe you can't trust. So I think, I, think a, I think a lot of it had to do with just personality uh, for Thomas Mulcair. Wow. And, and, you know, from their point of view, this was their big shot. And, you know, I think, you know, I think the NDP could be in real trouble because if, trust, if Justin Trudeau, and I, and I think this is the case, moves to the left, it kind of makes the NDP redundant. Mm -hmm. So I think what they might do is they might say, you know what, our problem was we weren't left-wing enough. We have to get really more left-wing. We have to adopt a really hardcore socialist agenda. Mm -hmm. That'll get us back into it. 
um, which is basically what the Labour Party is doing in the United Kingdom. They, they, they've got a leader named Jeremy Corbyn who's really almost like a Marxist. He's so far to the left. I could see the NDP doing something similar as well. Mm -hmm. Anytime soon, Thomas Mulcair is resigning? I, I think he's, I'm surprised he, you know, he's <laughs> sort of hanging on. I thought he might quit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, credit to him for, for hanging on because he's going to, you know, he's going to take a lot of heat from his caucus. He's going to take a lot of heat from his base. A lot of people are going to blame him for blowing this great opportunity for him. So it takes a little bit of courage for him to sort of stick around for that. Um, uh, I think he's going to have to convince his caucus. He's going to have to convince his base that he is still the guy to do it. It's going to be tough, but you know, uh, I, I'm not sure the NDP is really going to be in the, in the mood to have a leadership right now, so mm -hmm. they, they might stick with them for one more chance anyway. Mm -hmm. Jerry, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, ethnic voters. Mm -hmm. How far you think it was the ethnic voter which determined the uh, success or the win for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau? Well, this is interesting because um, I think a lot of the success for Stephen Harper in 2011 was because he was able to break in to a lot of the ethnic votes, a lot of the immigrant votes. Um, and, and I think that was because they had done such a good job of sort of communicating and getting the message out to them, which is I think conservative parties and Canada had done a really bad job for a long, long time. I think a lot of conservatives said, well, they're all going to vote liberal. They're, you know, what, why should we even try? Um, under Stephen Harper, I think the conservatives made a real effort to say, look, we have a lot of things in common, both in terms of our, our social values, in terms of our economic ideas, in terms of our sense of, you know, we need entrepreneurial spirit in this country. We have a lot of things in common. Uh, I don't think the, you know, the Conservatives didn't you know, overwhelmingly win uh, the ethnic vote in 2011, but they, they broke in and they, and they got a lot of it, uh, which helped them win in, in, in places around the GTA. What happened in 2015 is I think uh, the ethnic voters were like all voters. You know, we want change. You know, we're tired of you. We, we want something new. And I think the Liberals probably did a good job of saying, come back home. You know, we were once your party before. We want to be your party again. And look, we have this brand new spanking leader who's really cute. Um, so what, why, don't you, why don't you come back on board? So I think those two things combined, you know, I think to help, help, the, help the Liberal Party sort of win back a lot of those votes. Now, I think, I think there's still a fair game for, for the Conservative Party uh, in, in elections ahead, both provincially and federally. But, you know, they've got to get out there. They've got to communicate. They've got to get their message out to them. Mm -hmm. Do we need to get a charismatic hero like uh, leader for the Conservative Party? And if that is so, what, who are the few names in your mind? Well, ideally, you like to have a leader who's charismatic, um, but they're hard to come by. Mm -hmm. They don't grow on trees. Um, <laughs> and, and it also might be hard for the Conservatives to get a leader to out Trudeau Trudeau you know, to beat him at his own game. That might be a difficult task. And I can't really think of anybody off the top of my head in the Conservative Party who strikes me, oh, that's a really charismatic person. You know, it doesn't really strike me. So they might want to do a little bit of counter marketing because um, we don't know what the world's going to be like in 2019. If, if Trudeau is a disaster, if the economy is a wreck, if people are, you know, if people are really angry, they might be saying we've had it with pretty boys. We've had it with, you know, these charismatic leaders. We want, a, we, want a, we want a solid, competent guy who can handle the economy. In that case, they might want to, the conservatives might say, well, here's our, here's our person. He's boring, but he, he, he or she's good. Mm -hmm. they, they can fix the economy. That might be something that, that, can, that voters are looking for. But then who knows? Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to predict what, what politics would be like a week from now, you know, let alone four or five years from now. So it, it's, it's going to be a tough task for the conservatives to, to pick a leader. It's not going to be easy. What are, what are a few names you would consider for leadership? Well, I think, you know, the obvious names are guys like um, um, Jason Kenney. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to begin there. Uh, maybe Lisa Raitt uh, might, be, might be running. I think of names like Tony Clement might be a guy. T Peter McKay might be a guy. Some people are talking about uh, Brad Wall, Premier of Saskatchewan, being, being a, a candidate. I th I, there's nobody out there that really says this is the absolute, you know, choice. This is the heir apparent to Stephen Harper. So I think it's going to be an interesting race, and it'll be, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing who's, go who's going to jump into the fray. Awesome. It was wonderful to have you at my show, Power Dilemmas with Sarah Bukhari, and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much for listening to Power Dilemmas here with Sarah Bukhari. Canada is a country of democracy, and this election, election 2015, has really shown us that uh, if you want to see democracy, you see it in Canada. Thank you very much. Till next time. Take care.